You create a React app and are excited to get started. After some time, you have some components that need to communicate with each other. You start using props, and after 30 minutes, you realize using just props is getting a bit too messy. Time to use Redux. Stop. Don't be this guy. In this video, I'm going to show you a built-in React feature that is an alternative to Redux in many situations. Stick around till the end of the video because that's where we'll discuss when Redux is appropriate to use and when it is not. Here is a simple React app with just two things on it right now. Just a piece of state called on, where in our JSX we can click a button that will change the state between on and off. The conditionals in the button in the text just reflect what mode we're currently on, on or off. Now let's imagine we have a box right below this that is a completely separate component. In this box we need to know the state of on, so we can easily pass it down through props. And this box will just change color based on whether on is true or false. As you can see, if we click on and off now, the box changes color. Super simple, right? Now let's imagine that we have three boxes, each one being inside of each other. These first two boxes, box and box two, don't need to know the state because they are just going to remain green no matter what. However, this third box here still needs to know the state for the sake of changing the color between green and red. Now we have to propagate this on state through three layers of components just to get it to where it needs to be. We first pass it to box, which passes it to box 2, which then passes it to box 3. And we're doing this despite the fact that box 1 and 2 themselves don't actually need to know the state because they're not the ones that are changing color. This isn't a super huge issue in our extremely simple example with these three boxes, but it absolutely could be a problem if these components were to be more complex or even have multiple props to pass down in each one. If your first thought is, I want to avoid the drilling of these props like this, Time to use Redux, stop. There is a much easier way to take care of this than using Redux for a problem as simple as this one. React provides a hook that seems to be less commonly known about than other common hooks called used context that actually provides a way for children components to know the state of their parents without having to pass down a bunch of props, no matter how many layers of components that you're traveling down. How it works is actually super simple. In whichever file you have the state that you want to propagate down, you need to call a function called create context, which we can first import from React. Outside of the component that you're creating the state in, we want to create a context. We'll just do this by saying const, we'll call it on context since our state is called on, and we're going to set it equal to the create context React function. It's standard practice to capitalize the first letter of a context because we're going to use it as a component, which you'll see in just a second. Inside the parentheses here, similar to use state, we can pass in a default value. So let's just pass in null. This on context right here will allow us to pass down our state into children components without using props. Let me show you how. What this allows us to do now is go into the component where we are wanting to pass the state down. In our example, that is the app component. We can wrap the component with this on context, just like this. In order for this to work properly, you'll need to put dot provider after it in both the opening and the closing tags. Here is where we tell it what value we're wanting to pass down to possible children components. This opening tag is expecting a value prop, and that is where we can specify the state that we want. In our case, we want this value to be equal to on, the piece of state in question. What this has just done after creating the context, wrapping it with that context, and then passing in the value, has essentially just made this on state accessible to every single child component of app which is the component that we're currently in. So now we have no need to pass down this on prop through three layers of components. Let's delete where we're passing it down. So let's delete here and delete everywhere that we're expecting it in our props because we won't be needing it anymore. So we'll delete here. We'll delete it right here, here, and lastly in box three. Now in the component where we want to access the on state, we can make a simple React hook called use context, which we will first import from React up here. And we can go down into this component here, make a variable for this. Let's just call it on to keep the naming consistent. And we will set it equal to use context. And inside here, we need to name whatever context we want to use. We named ours on context in the app. So that's exactly what we'll pass in to our parentheses. If we now go ahead and save this file and click the toggle on and off, you'll see that our app behaves the exact same way that it did before. Despite the fact that we removed all the prop drilling that we were doing. It's as simple as that. As a very broad summary, in the file that has your parent component, you want to call create context. You want to do it in the same file, but outside of the component itself. And then inside that parent component, you want to wrap your JSX with that context, add .provider to the end of it, and then pass in whatever value that you're wanting to pass down to its children. 
Then in any child component you want to access the state, instead of having to mess with a bunch of props, you can just call the use context hook and pass in the name of the context that you defined in the parent component and your state will be easily available. Simple. You can do a lot with context. You don't need to pass down just a single thing in the context provider like we're doing here. You can also pass down objects and functions. If I wanted to add the ability for a child component to change the state of the parent, I could instead make this value here an object and I could pass in both on and set on. And then in the child component, I could just destructure that to get both on and set on here. And then what I could do is something like this in the div, I can make an on click event and I can make it so that whenever I click this div, we're going to call set on to change the state of on to be opposite of what it currently is. Now, if I go ahead and save it and click this innermost nested box, this box three here, you can see that the state of on is changing between on and off. So we have just allowed the child component to actually change the state of its parent without having to do all sorts of propagating or props through multiple different layers. We've made it super simple. This method of using context lets you avoid having huge prop trains where you're propagating it down a ton of different layers, while also providing an alternative to something that is much less lightweight like Redux. So then the real question becomes, when should I use React context versus when should I use Redux or something similar? Here's my opinion on it. Here's a chart with props, context, and Redux. This is really the trifecta of methods we could choose when wanting React components to interact with one another. Where is each one appropriate, starting with props? Props are the most common and are most appropriate when passing data between a parent and an immediate child, or I'd say at most two children down, assuming both children need the parent's state information. Using props alone is the simplest way of child-parent communication and works great in many scenarios. However, sometimes, like in our example, we need to pass props down through multiple layers, through layers that don't even need them. This is where create context and use context come into play. Using context is appropriate whenever you want to avoid prop drilling, which is what we just described. It's great for simple scenarios where we only need one or very few values passed down through layers of children components. Using Redux or a similar technology is appropriate if your app has become very large or complex and has many pieces of state or values that need to be shared between one another. It's far better than the other two if your app has a web-like state structure where one child component might affect the functionality of a cousin component, which then may affect its parent, which may affect that grandparent's cousin, and you get the picture. Redux is very good at handling situations where state becomes very complex or interconnected. However, the reason for the title of this video and the reason I discourage using Redux all the time is that all too often I see people get to step one, using props, and they find that props get slightly inconvenient, so they move straight to using Redux, skipping step two entirely. Don't be that person. This chart should read from left to right, just as we have it. When you first create an app and need to have communication between components, try using props. If that gets a bit too much and maybe requires you to do some prop drilling, try using context instead. And only if that isn't viable or efficient, then should you consider using Redux. Redux is not super lightweight, so I would not recommend slapping it onto your app at the moment you encounter a problem. And with that, we're going to end this video here. Hopefully after showing you a bit about use context, you're able to solve some of your state management issues super simply without having to add a bunch of Redux functionality to your app. Take care everyone, and I'll see you in a future video.